from the 11th chapter of Matthew. God, we thank you for the Holy Ghost. God, stir us up, wake us up. Thank you, Master. Well, Matthew is 11. 11 and verse 1. And it came to pass when John had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed then to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Are you he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show again, John, the things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the leopards are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have the gospel preached to them. Blessed is he who ever is not offended in me. Verse 6, or verse 5 and 6 and 7 from uh, chapter 10 and 8. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, or into any city of the Samaritans, enter you not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, or is near. Heal the sick, cleanse the leprosy, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Holy Father, I thank you for this word. Hide it in our hearts. Sanctify it, God, in us. Keep a clean heart and a right spirit inside of me. Help me, Lord, to walk in the way that you walked and offer myself to walk as you walk. Cleanse me always with your blood. Help me to deny my flesh and take up my cross and to bear your cross all in your name. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to speak to you for a few moments before I minister on a dead raising revival. Now, I believe that me and you are going to see a dead raising revival. Praise God. God has prophesied this through many ministers. It's got to come out right. As far back as Amy McPherson, her prophecies went forth that a dead raising revival is going to break out. You go back in her, her, her word in her ministry and you'll find that she prophesied. Wigglesworth, long during her day, Dr. Price, Wigglesworth uh, went to a funeral and the Lord spoke to him that there's coming a dead raising revival. And he went to a funeral. The Lord told him to take the, the corpse up out of the coffin and a stand it up against the wall and a command him to walk. And he took the corpse out of the coffin and stood him up against the wall and commanded him to walk and he fell down. The Lord told him, said, pick him back up, push him back up against the wall and commanded him to walk again. So he picked him up, put him up against the wall a second time, commanded him to walk, backed off, and he fell again. So the Lord told him the third time, said, pick him up, put him up against the wall, and command this dead man that you took out of the coffin to walk. How about you in California? And he commanded him to walk the third time and he batted his eyes and he began to move his feet and he began to walk and in a few moments he was totally alive. But at first he said he was stiff and, and everything just like he was. But he become alive, done in the coffin. And God told Smith and Wigglesworth that there's coming a dead raising revival. I'm in a dead raised revival. Now, well, the healing revival broke out in about eight past 
uh, the healing revival they call it in the 47 book out. But it never did develop, even though there was testimonies occasionally that the dead was raised. But you couldn't really say that revival that broke out 42 years ago was a dead raised revival. Now all manner of sicknesses and all manner of healing was worse than those meetings. And Branham, Brother Branham was overseas and the little boy was killed in the car wreck. The little boy in Arkansas that was killed in the car wreck. And a few testimonies. But it was so rare to the preachers couldn't preach raising the dead like praying for the sick. But God told Brother Branham that there was coming a revival that His people, that God's people was going to say what they will and it will happen. Well, Jack Cole prophesied and God showed him that there was coming a dead raising revival before Jesus comes. And he absolutely, they called him the apostle of faith. A. A. Allen, when he was in the depths of his fasting and praying ministry, I'm talking about when in the latter 40s and early 50s when there was no doubt that God walked and talked in the Allen revival. You couldn't deny it. A boy that I knew that he's 47 years old. He passed about two weeks ago. He was in A. A. Allen's revival back there right in the early 50s. Just a boy. And it's in one of, if you, if anybody has the old Allen revival magazines, a cross of blood appeared on that boy's forehead. I knew that boy. And I talked to him. I later met him. And I asked him about that. And I, I saw it in the magazine, read the testimony. He said there was a, before that happened, he said there was a glorious Shekinah glory in the service and said a warm feeling come over him and, and said that he didn't know what happened. He was busy praising God and, they, and, and the audience saw it and they took the pictures of it. And then he saw it. And it stayed for hours and it disappeared like it came. It happened to him about three or four times. But it happened to a lot of people. Absolutely supernatural oil. I mean, you couldn't deny it when the oil was running up people's hands, dropping to the floor. I saw it. I'm not telling you something that, that a bunch of these modern preachers that don't even preach hardly depths anymore, talking about things instead of the gospel. You know it's the truth. They get up and talk about the projects and all the television stations they're going to buy and all this kind of stuff. Buy a little gospel they ever preach. I'm talking about when men stood in the pulpit and preached and sweat run out of them when they walked in a trail of sweat. I'm talking about when, when ministers preached for two hours and sweat dripped off of them and the healing lines was around the tent. You've been in some of the meetings. Some of them very crusades come right here to uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and you sat in them. You saw them big tents. When there would be 30 or 40 or 500 or, or 100 laying over on stretchers. And they start pulling them up on the platform. They start getting up, walking away when, when some of them look like the very corpse themselves. But during the time of a. A. Allen's ministry, he prophesied that there was coming a dead raising revival. A dead raising revival. What's happened? All this persecution set in a few years ago, and preachers got us afraid. I said they got afraid. Cole went through a persecution just before he passed away. Allen went through that big court trial. 
And all this is going to happen to preachers. That ain't got nothing to do with what God said. But I want to tell you something. Somebody told me, said, well, uh, Cole died a young man. I said, Stephen's died a young man. Jesus was crucified a young man. John died a young man. Do you know John was only about 31 years old when he beheaded him? Stephen was a very young preacher, had a very short ministry. James had a very short ministry. But that don't deny the fact God had to give some testimonies. And God, through these men, and then God spoke to me when I was a boy in 1954. He said, in your lifetime, there are going to be a dead raising revival. If my mother was alive and here tonight, she would tell you. I was in the back room of the house. She had a big old bungalow house. And I was in the back room fasting and praying. And an angel come to the foot of my bed and woke me up and spoke to me and said, In your lifetime, there's coming a revival that the dead is going to be raised. It's going to be a dead raising revival. Hallelujah! Glory! And all, God knew all of this. He knew all this chaos and all this that's going to happen to the church world. But let me tell you something. This ain't the only generation that's went through a chaos in religion. Man, just before Martin Luther rose up in the Catholic Church, over 30,000 priests went through a scandal. Back in history. I'm studying church history again. 30,000 priests throughout Europe was guilty of what you've been hearing about these preachers. It caused Martin Luther to search for God and God spoke to him. Back in the uh, 1800s, there was a religious scandal. Just before the revival broke out in the 42 years ago, there was a religious scandal. I mean, it hit the church. It was terrible. That ain't got anything. They was religious scandals back in the Old Testament, the New Testament. Paul said, I've been, de been defamed. I've been scandaled. I've had evil reports put out on me, Paul said. But God is still God. God's Word cannot change. And we are now going to see a dead raisin revival that's going to shock the world. I'm not talking about some big shot, somebody coming from way somewhere, some somebody pulling rabbits out of a hat. We've been looking for somebody dressed in a certain way and, and all this kind of stuff. I'm talking about just common believers. I'm talking about just like men and women that goes to church, that worships God in spirit. They're going to lay hands on the dead. They're going to get that compost. They're going to get that word of unction. And they're going to speak to the dead. And the dead's going to set up. I have saw it. I have saw it in vision. And I know that it's now, we're now entered into the time. Hallelujah. The world is going to see a dead raising Jesus kind of revival. I was real tired today. And I try not to confess being tired, but sometimes you get tired if you don't confess it. God told me not to confess nothing negative. Confess positive, but sometimes you get tired anyhow. Jesus got tired. Warning. You know, I believe we're going to have immortality. I believe it. I, you may not believe it. I believe God's bringing forth a life in us. Before Jesus comes, we're not going to wait to meet Him in the air to get this life. We're going to get it now. I believe that with all my heart. Because that's what the last trump's all about, is the mystery of God being finished. But until we get that place in God, we're going to...
And even Jesus had that life in Him. He could walk through a door. You say, well, after He's resurrected, I'm going to tell you something, folks. He could walk through a door before He was resurrected. I can show you in the Bible where Jesus was in a crowd and they were trying to kill Him and He disappeared. Before He was on the cross. I show you in the Bible before Jesus was crucified that they were out there in the, uh, the water about to drown and Jesus went up the mountains to pray and the people went around the lake on the other side and the storm came up while they was in the water and the Bible said Jesus came walking on the water to them. And that wasn't after His resurrection. Let me tell you something. When Jesus comes in your life, He is the resurrection. You ain't got to wait till yonder to get a taste of the resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection, and I am the life, and he that believes on me, though he were dead yet, shall he live. But then he said, he that lives and believes on me shall have this resurrection in him. The living is going to have this testimony. The living is going to have this resurrection. That's what's going to raise the dead. We're coming into a resurrection revival where Jesus is going to be resurrected in you. Hallelujah. Resurrect yourself. Paul said that I might know Him and the power of His resurrection. You're going to know that before He comes in clouds. You're going to know it right here. Hallelujah. And God showed me that's what's going to raise the dead. Me and you are coming into the sonship. We're sons of God. We've been on the governors. We've been on the tutors. But the time has come that you're no more a servant, but you're a son of God. A full adopted son of God. Hallelujah. With power. With the Holy Ghost. With life. Just a bunch of somebody's. Nobody's yours. Nobody's becoming somebody. God's people. God's temple. And Jesus said, The works that I do, you will do it. And greater works than these shall you do. Thank God. It's an hour of that greater work. And I'm going to tell you, the old devil ain't got nothing. He said, well, if I didn't have to fight the devil, well, I got news for you. You don't have to fight him no more. He's already whooped. He's already whooped. Jesus said, you are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror through him that loves you. Jesus has done conquered the devil. Jesus has done whip the devil. Somebody said, if I could just whip this cancer, Jesus has already whipped that cancer. If I could just whip this rheumatism, Jesus has just whipped that rheumatism. If I could just whip that heart trouble, Jesus has already whipped that heart trouble. It's already whipped at Calvary. Anything he's born, you don't have to bear it. Anything he's defeated is already defeated. Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. Jesus said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's time for you to start confessing that Jesus is not up yonder, but in hell. He's inside of you. He lives in you. And He's greater. Greater than anything the devil. You're more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror.
He said, what do I do when the devil come around? Do what the Bible said do. Tell him to go. I resist you. Stand up to him. The Bible said in the Moffat translation, stand up to him and he'll turn and run. James said, resist him and he'll flee from you. You got to realize through Jesus you're more than a conqueror. Through Him that loves you. Through Him that died for you. He died and was resurrected that you might have life. He become poor that you might be rich. He died that you might live. He become sin that you might be made free from sin. He bore your sickness. He didn't have no personal sickness. He didn't have no personal sin. He bore my sins and my sickness. And I don't have to bear something that He's bore for me. And you don't either. The moment you realize that Jesus has already paid the price for you, you can start shouting the victory. If you notice, I don't just preach as us. I preach Jesus. When I, I'm going to preach Saturday night and I'm telling you on the wrath of God against the wicked. God told me the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. We're fixing to see it literally fall on the ungodly. But the righteous ain't going to have one hair of their head touch. God told me the angels of God this year is taking charge over God's sons. The children of God. You no longer have to be afraid of the devil because God is taking... Uh, Taking his angels and putting them over you, and they're going to guard you. We have now come to the city of God, the New Jerusalem. Hallelujah. To an innumerable company of angels under the church of the firstborn. Thank God, under the spirit of just men, made perfect. Thank God, in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. You can cheer up. You can lift up your holy hands. You can praise Him. You can magnify Him. You are somebody. You are Son of God. You are Jesus' temple. You are the habitation of God. Jesus lives here. You are the good seed, the children of the kingdom. I said, you are the good seed. The children of the kingdom. And the devil has no power over you. Jesus had all power in heaven and in earth. It's given to me. Turn around and told his disciples. Said, what I am, you are. I'm the light of the world, now you the light of the world. I've got power... The fullness of the God had them in the head of all power. Fullness of all power lives in Jesus. He said, now behold, I give unto you power over all devils. And death is the devil. Death is the enemy. And God said he was giving you power over death, over sickness, over blindness, over Satan, over unclean. Cars can kiss each other sitting in, in front of your house. It's the truth. And a man just got to get out. No wonder folks are going crazy. Kids is getting in trouble. No place to ride a bicycle. You can't have a dog. You can't have a pony. You know, boys got to have a pony. Brother Blue, if you don't give your boy a pony, he's going to get in trouble. Say amen. <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Always. If you don't... You know, you buy motorcycles and three-wheelers, they get killed. Get him a pony. If it gets towed off, it won't hurt him much. But you can't have that. And so we, I went over there, and it was the, the lake's right under a bed of pines. And I put me some hooks out. And I began to pray in them pines. And I went into a vision. I remember while I was in the vision, a big old bass got on my hook and pulled it way back under a brush. Like never got down, but... I wonder where it happened. But I was praying. And I went to division. And the Lord spoke these words. He said, 89 
is the year of the revival that everybody has prophesied about. Gordon Lynch and everybody has prophesied there's coming Elijah revival. Elijah ministry. Some have been looking for a man, but most of them understood it was a, a ministry. You know, everybody's looking for two men in Revelation. I believe they could be. But two men can't reach this world. It has to be the two olive trees, which is the two nations. The Gentile and the Jew. The Bible said it's the two olive trees. And the olive tree got all the branches. And you're going to find out there ain't going to be just two men prophesying. Everybody's got the Holy Ghost is going to be prophesying. Every man, every woman, some folks say, well, a woman, she ain't supposed to speak in church. You ought to go somewhere else than that. You know, you got to go somewhere with that story. I didn't go over too much, but you still better go somewhere else with it. So God's been quite his, his spirit upon these women. These women is fixing to open their mouth. You men have been sitting here watching TV and smoking a pipe. These women are fixing to go with this message. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. God said, I'm going to pour my spirit upon your sons and your daughters and you ain't going to keep their mouth shut. They're going to prophesy. Your handmaids ain't going to just sit in the house and wash dishes. Your handmaids is going to get out of the kitchen and get out of the house and they're fixing to hit the highways and hedges with this gospel. Well, glory. Hallelujah. But I don't believe in women preachers. It don't make no difference what you believe. <laughs> they gonna preach anyhow. I done found that out. I don't care what you don't believe about them. They gonna open their mouths anyway. Women's gonna do what they want to, and now God's gonna pour the Holy Ghost on them, and they gonna want to preach. They gonna want to do something for Jesus. They gonna want to tell the story of the Lord God Jehovah, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Praise His name! And the Lord told me, said, in April of 89, I saw we went into a spirit realm with God. We went into a spirit world with God. And I looked and I saw this casket over here in church. Saw this minister. Standing up here. And this casket was down here. To the side. And he was looking at that casket. And all of a sudden, God gave him that impulse. He was going to raise that man up in that casket. And he looked and he seen the angels of God around that coffin. And when he saw the angels of God around that coffin, he went down and laid hands on that coffin. And that man was raised up and stood up, resurrected. And I've seen a newsman like David, I mean like Ted Topper, interviewing the doctor that signed his death certificate. I saw the undertaker being interviewed on another television screen that embalmed him. And then I saw they had the man that was dead and the newsman was interviewing him. And he was telling us about life back from the dead. Thank God. We're fixing to hear some stories from heaven. Hallelujah. And God told me, we're going into a dead raising revival. Now, he told me, said, shall break out in April of 89 and the sons of God shall come forth. You just want to get ready for it. Put this here setting well. I've heard and I've been stirred. Let me tell you. We've tapped into God ever Every revival's tapped in. We've saw it. God let the prophets see 
a little taste of the Holy Ghost, but he never let them have it because it wasn't time. I mean, I mean, men far back as you can read about men of God, they, they had a taste of the Holy Ghost. But they never had the baptism because there was a point in time from the beginning, God, from the book of Acts, from the days of Jesus. And when John looked at Jesus, he didn't just have a healing revival, he had a dead raising revival. And he told us, as he is in this world, so are we. That's what John taught us. As he is, so are we. Preachers ain't telling us today that the dead can be raised. Jesus didn't just send the preachers out just to pray for the sick. He said, when you go into a city, He commanded them. I'm telling you, the raising the dead is not just a commission. It's a command. He commanded them to preach what? The kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. These preachers ain't preaching the gospel of the kingdom. You know what the word kingdom means? It means the place where the king lives. The place of power. The place of authority. For it is the kingdom of God. It's in you. The place of authority. is in you. And this is the gospel of the kingdom that God lives in His people. That God took over His people. That Jesus now lives here. The king lives here. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. And he told me I seen that it was like in the days of Job. I never even thought of this to then. The devil said, I can't touch Job. He's got a hedge about it. God showed me the hedge is the angels. God's angels watching over us. And he gave me for Scripture to cover it. Psalms 91. That the angels of God... Take charge over us. He told me this year that the angels is going to take charge over the ministry. That's what's been happening. That's why all this upsets in the ministry. God is getting people's eyes off of man where they can get their eyes back on God. Our eyes has been on great television. It's been on great men. Now the great men has been corrupted and now we're going to be whole by Jesus Christ in the saints. And you need to worry about Brother Terrell. I'm going to be right there with you. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, Brother Terrell's going to die. Let me tell you something. going to have to take a lot more than that to kill me. Thank you, Jesus. Moses didn't even get in his ministry until he's 80. Hallelujah. Being 20 years old or 60 years old ain't got nothing to do with it. Being 80 years old or 40 years old ain't got nothing to do with it. Thank God. You're going to have to make up your mind that age ain't getting in this, that you're getting in this. This is not an age revival. This is a Holy Ghost revival. This is a revival that the saints of the Most High is going to possess the kingdom and take it by force. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Man, I'm feeling good tonight. I'm feeling religious. Y'all ain't feeling religious. I said, I'm feeling religious. I'm feeling holiest. Hallelujah. I'm feeling godly. I'm feeling Jesus. I said, I'm feeling Jesus in me. You don't feel Jesus in you. I feel Jesus in me. He said, well, I'm so afraid. Quit worrying about it. Get your eyes on Jesus. Flesh and blood ain't going to even hurt it no how. So worry about flesh. We get our eyes on flesh. You get to battling flesh, the next thing you know, you'll be discouraged. You wake up in the morning, go all day long, you won't want to buy to eat, get busy. Go all day long and say, my Lord, I didn't even have time to eat. They weren't even hungry. Fall asleep and wake up next morning, get busy. About three o'clock in the evening, you know I ain't even had time to eat all for two days now. I think I'll go on a fast. The moment you call it a fast, you get hungry as a bear. You started battling. 
When the devil hears you say fast, he lays a chicken leg in front of your eyes. He lays a piece of cheesecake. Hallelujah. It's the truth. He lays a big old quarter pounder. Right there. French fries and tomatoes and lettuce and onions. And a big old glass of ice tea right there for you. Don't let the devil hear it. The Bible said don't let your right hand know what your left hand's fixing to do. Praise God. I said praise God. Thank God you get out here and you open your mouth on the telephone and the devil's got your Watergate count. Here's what she's talking on the phone. Confess your faith in secret. Confess your faith to God. The Bible said let a man have faith. Let him have it to himself. And get on and do what you're going to do. And God told me the devil don't know everything. You start telling him. You want to give up some, just give it up. Don't even breath it. You're trying to quit smoking, don't tell nobody you're trying to quit smoking. Just keep in your heart. Get busy reading the Bible and praying. And next thing you know, you won't even want no cigarettes. Somebody come around there and say, you, you trying to quit smoking? You, man, you get right there, you just die for a cigarette, not in the presence. It's the truth and you know it is. Thank God, get busy seeking God. Seeking the kingdom. Seeking God for what God? I read a snag here, but it's the truth anyhow. Won't you try it sometime? Won't you get up in the mornings and you say, "Well, I'm on." You you call out, "Hello, uh, sister, smoking night? Is that you?" Yeah, uh, you know I'm going to pray all day tomorrow. I'm going to fast tomorrow. <laughs> My Lord, you wake up in the morning. There's a thousand things you think about doing. You smell them bacons and eggs in yours. I think I'll just go and eat breakfast and I'll start at dinner. <laughs> but what God said do, get up and fast. Don't tell everybody. Wash your face, comb your hair, and fast. Think of what Jesus said, and did you have the devil hounding you? Man, he'll have your best friend. Get a big old bite of that quarter penny chip. Do you like a bite? They'll hang you a bite right in your nose. And you say, well, uh, I guess so. <laughs> you thought you ain't fair just that one little... You want one? <laughs> so, we throw ourselves in these battles. And what God wants us to do is to get our heart on Him and do what we do, do it unto Him and not unto nothing else. And you'll find yourself praying more days, fasting more, and don't broadcast it. And I found out that when, when the Lord spoke to me, my great miracles of my ministry, when I felt that impulse, just do it before I have time to doubt it. God told me, he said, what the devil don't know, don't tell him. He said, the pe my people think the devil knows everything, but said he don't know everything. He said, if the devil would have known what you was going to get while you was in this place, he wouldn't have put you in here. He told me, he said, if the devil would have known that Jesus was going to be resurrected, he wouldn't have crucified him. And the Bible said that. The Bible said that if the prince of this world would have known the power of the cross, they would not have crucified our Lord. So you can see right there, the devil don't know everything. Me and you tell him. Me and Sister Bunny, we, we agree to anything bad or negative, we will not talk loud. We whisper in one another's ears because the devil has got his little antennas up all over the house and he hears you talking. And he hears you say, I'm going to fast tomorrow. And man, if the next one on the telephone don't run, what are you doing, Sister Brown? Well, uh, I don't know what. What, what do you want to know for? 
So while I'm going out to lunch today down here at the Red Lobster, get some crab legs. Would you like to... Uh, uh, my husband handed me uh, $30 this morning and said, take a friend out there and I just thought of you. <laughs> well, well, I done told uh, the Lord has gone fast. You know, you did jump. I done, but the devil done heard you and he done had Sister Hoopendiddle call you up and tell you, give you that invitation. You ever had that to happen? You ever had anybody call you up and give you an invitation to eat when you friend on fasting? You ever been able to pray all day and somebody, uh, and you told her, uh, made it known, you know? Next morning you got a phone call, so how about, how about running out of, up to the shopping center with me? Stay all day at the mall. Didn't buy a thing. Didn't have nothing to buy, nothing. Then that the night come, you, you spent all evening at the mall, didn't buy a thing. Miserable as you can be, you come in, feel guilty, condemn. Well, uh, devil accused, see that? You didn't pray. Don't let the devil know all of your thoughts. Take Jesus' word. Don't let your right hand or your left hand know what the other one's doing. Thank God. Do what you do unto God. Jesus said, don't fast as a Pharisee. Don't put on a robe. A purple robe and get on the street corner and make your face look hungry. Get up and comb your hair. The word wash your face means north your head. The word north your head means to comb your hair. Wash your face. Put on your regular clothes. And don't sell up tell a soul. If, you, if uh, anybody asks you why you ain't eating breakfast, just tell them you don't want nothing. You don't want nothing because you want to pray. You ain't lying. You don't want to eat. I don't want to eat. Don't explain to them. When you start this fire, come on. Now you know you're going to get hungry. Well, they come down there. Church ran out of dinner and that field fasting. Pastor come down and we said, you're starving to death. I said, man, I said, go on, leave me alone. I said, I want my pastor to come see me. Don't come down here and tell me I'm going to starve to death. I'd read Franklin Hall's fasting book from here. Man, that was a good atomic pile. That was a good book. He teaches you, if you're fast right, you ain't going to starve to death in 40 days. Well, you couldn't starve yourself to death in three days. Unless you was already starved to death. Then you might starve to death if you've already starved to death. You can live a long time off that fat. It takes you more than three days to get that belly going down. It takes you about two weeks to lose that little, little lap over. You've got enough of that little lap over there to last you two or three weeks. But see what it is? It's a devil torment you because you let him in on all your secrets. See, the Bible said them that walk in where? The secret place of the Almighty. God's going to keep it. And that's what he told me we're moving into that secret place of the Almighty. You're going to walk in the Spirit. If you walk in the flesh, if you live after the flesh, if you walk in the flesh, the Bible said you shall die. But if you through the Spirit, not through your own self-will, not through your quitting something, but if you through the Spirit mortify or put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. I've had more battles because I myself try to mortify me when God said through the Spirit do it. If me and you as followers of Christ will start mortifying the deeds of our body through the Holy Ghost, we won't have no battle. And then we're going to raise the dead. And I'll close with this. I feel the Holy Ghost. I told you earlier, most of you know I've been in jail. And if you that don't know it, you know it now. <laughs> praise God. I've been in jail... About five months. Man, it seemed like it had been five years. Everywhere I went, they didn't want me to pray. Chapel, chaplain didn't want me to pray in the chapel. Third day I was there, the guard came out there and said, What are you doing? 
I said, I'm praying. He said, I want to tell you right now. I said, if you anywhere where there ain't nobody, I said, you're in the wrong place. I said, you're here by yourself. I said, you always got to be around people. When you're controlled, he said, always remember that. If you're anywhere where ain't nobody, he said, you ain't supposed to be there. He said, we'll throw you in a hole. But said, since you ain't been here but two or three days, he said, I'll excuse you this time. Well, as I was praying, he said, I don't care what you're doing. He said, and I had to pray for a place to pray. I wanted to pray so bad. They had a little old place up a room that wasn't used up on the, at the hospital. And I tried to get them to let me clean it out and pray. They wouldn't do it. But there was a Mr. Austin that came to work on our shift at this time in the morning for three months. And he was a nice fella. He was a, a guard, but he was a nice fella. And it was cold. And I worked up in the hospital park. When I'd get my work done, down, uh, I had a place about as big as this right here, a big fence around the, behind the hospital where they brought the, the patients down. When it's real sunshiny like today, and let them get sunshine. Well, when it's cold or rainy, or at certain hours, they didn't bring them down. So Mr. Austin would open that gate and unlock that back door and let me go back there and pray. Because I asked him, I said, Mr. Austin, I got my work cut up. Could I go back there and pray? Would you please let me? I said, that. And so he let me pray. So it was on a cold day that I carried me a glass of water. I told him, I said, now, his control is right here and he can see me. I said, if, if you need me, just tap on the window and I'll be, I'll, I'll watch you. While I'm praying, I'll watch and if you need me, you motion, I'll be right there. And I know what I'm fixing to tell you is the truth because God gave me a miracle. And listen, I was praying and I got me a glass of hydrogen water that I had in my sale. And I set it down out there, and it froze. That's how cold it was while I was praying. But I wanted to pray so bad, and I prayed myself warm. And I walked in that fence, and I prayed. And Jesus Christ spoke to me in an audible voice. While I was praying, He said, when you get out of prison, He said, I want you to go. He said, I'm going to lead you to go to the west. He said, there going to be a young people's revival breakout. And thousands of young people are going to receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He said, there's going to be a revival breakout. That I'm going to give power back to my church over all devils. To cast them out. He told me, said, the revival of A.E. A. Allen. In its prime, when A.E. Allen, everybody knows A.E. Allen was a man that had power with the devil. He said, the revival of casting out devils that A.E. Allen has, said, there's no comparison to the devils that's going to be driven out. He said, I'm going to give power over to my people, to my church. Over scorpions and serpents and over all power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt them. And he said the dead will be raised like healing the sick. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory! We are going to see it. And now he's told me this is the time. While I was praying out there, they had just put a young man, a young man in there, 30 years old. I didn't really know him, but he was a black boy. And his name was Mark. His mama was from Tucson, Arizona. And I knew I worked up at the hospital and going back and forth. He was in a wheelchair. While I was praying, he was in his cell 
And he come over to the window and he hollered, Preacher! Raised the little window. Hollered, Preacher! And I stopped and I said, Yeah? He said, Come here! I said, I can't. I said, Mr. Austin, let me pray out here. And I said, I, if I go up there, I said, he may catch me gone and not let me back. He said, please, preacher, come here for just one moment. But upstairs. So I eased back in. Mr. Austin was busy doing some typing and everything. He's there. And I eased by the door, eased by the controls, went upstairs. And he pulled up his shirt. He said, you see this right here? He said, I was running from a policeman. He hollered, halt. And I didn't. And he took a 357 and blowed my back out. And he said, I'll always be paralyzed. But he said, preacher, first thing he asked me. He said, are you baptized in Jesus' name? I said, yes, sir. He said, when I heard you talking in them tongues, he said, I knew that you had the same kind of religion my mama had. He said, I'm a runaway child. He said, I left home and ran away from Tucson, Arizona when I was 14 years old. He said, my mama hadn't heard from me since. But said she knew I was fixing to run because I was rebellious, always in trouble. And said, one day she talked to me and she said, Mark, if you ever get in trouble, no matter where you are and where you're at, if you will call on the name of Jesus, He'll deliver you. And He'll help you out of it. That's when He pulled up that shirt and showed me that place. He said, Preacher, He said, I'm in trouble. He said, My mama don't know where I'm at. He said, I used to sit on a pallet in them holiness meetings. He said, Right now. He said, Would you pray for me? I laid my hands upon him. I had that, the guard later took that little ball of holy oil away from me. But I had a little ball of holy oil that I put in my little shaving kit when I went in. And I got it out of my pocket. And I know anything. And I prayed for him. And while I prayed for him, he lifted his hands. While I had my hands on his head, he started speaking in tongues. And received in tears running down his cheeks. I said, Mark, i got to get back down yonder as quick as I can. I said, I'll, I'll talk to you later. i got to get back down yonder where I was. I said, if Mr. Austin catches me going, he won't let me back out there. So I ran back down there and the easement of the control went down there and was praying for Mr. Austin. Found out I was going. I turned back. Hallelujah. I was praying again, walking around that old dead rose bush. Hallelujah. And I looked up and Mark hollered at me. He said, Preacher, look. And he had gotten out of that wheelchair. He was walking across. I could see him between the bars. He was walking across that room. Hallelujah. With his hands up. Thank God. Hallelujah. And that was the day that God told me that there's going to come a dead raising revival. Thank God. And last year, in November and December, he told me that this is the year that God is going to move for seven years. Get my tape on seven years revival. I've got two of them back there. And you'll know, folks, I'm fixing clothes right now. Hallelujah. The first of the year, you might have saw this. David Brinkley, an old newsman, that comes on some. He was on the news just in the first of the year. He said they have discovered that they have made a mistake in our calendar five years. He said we're really living right now in the beginning of 93. I've just been compelled by the Lord. I've went in ashes last month and still getting in ashes a day or two a week praying for a while. I made a dedication to seek God like that. In my meetings for a while, you know, in the night. And I went back into history, got some of the best history books. I've got them in my room right now. History says, more than one history says it, that Jesus was born from six, four to six years B.C. and not 
1989 years ago. They've proven it. So, we are living seven years, and anybody knows anything about the Bible, that after this six thousand years over, they've got to be a chain. If you believe the Bible is God's Word, you've got to believe that something's got to happen. Now, God made the world in six days, and He's called the seventh day a Sabbath, a rest day, and He gives throughout the Scriptures, He bears out. But there's a thousand years that the earth is going to rest. And I ain't got time to get into all that, but you know that. If you know anything about the Bible, you know that, that this dispensation's got to change quick. But I didn't know all this when God told me about the seven years. He told me beginning this year in April. Well, the Jewish calendar begins in April. It begins in April. Of course, I knew that, but I didn't prophesy according to what I knew. God told me. And we're now. We're now. We're going to see God move, but we've got to get the... Set around the time of God told me in 62, He said, they're going to be our last bloody... He called it a latter rain revival of the Holy Ghost. He said, many Pentecost are going to fight it just like they fought because they're going to set back. And not see the need of going on. He told me there's going to be a new crop. And it's here. I want to be part of it. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. God, in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tonight, touch this on it. God, give a divine miracle. Give a stir. Give a divine miracle of your anointing, of your word, of your power, of your restoration. God, I read what Paul said, stir up the gifts of God. Jesus, I can't believe that you've anointed me here with this free anointing and that you ain't got some people here that's going to be part of this revival. God, I read in Romans 8 where you said the cheering of God would bear witness. God, bear witness tonight, Lord. Lord, you said we'd bear witness that we're the cheering of God. We're bear witness. God, you said we was heirs and joiners with Christ. Heirs to God and joiners with Christ. Hallelujah tonight. Pastor, Lady Patrice, Oh, Lana, Mana, Zana, Mastalero.